Good evening. And welcome to Good Friday, a day of paradox, a day when we gather in solemnity and in awe of the cross, but a day in which we remember the glory of the cross and the joy of the resurrection that will come afterwards. Yesterday, we gathered in the same space, and we joined Judas and all the disciples at the table of forgiveness. We wondered at the overwhelming, intimate love of Jesus as we remembered the ways that we have betrayed our own relationships with God. And as we confessed our sins, we heard the profound word of forgiveness that is gifted to each of us over and over again in God's abundant grace. Yesterday, we paused in the moment of everlasting love and forgiveness. But today, we paused in the difficult moment of death. We know that Christ will live again. We know the resurrection is coming. We know that the cross is a sign of glory. But still, the weight of the story that leads us there is heavy. Tonight, we grieve. We grieve for the ways our sin participates in putting Jesus to death. We grieve for the pain and suffering Jesus endures. We grieve for the times when death seems to win. Now we know it's not the end of the story. We know that death is defeated and Christ will live again. We know that for there to be resurrection, there also must be death. But death still hurts. Grief still weighs on our hearts. Tonight's service is centered on the events leading to Jesus' death and burial, as it is told in the Gospel of John. We slowly read through the story, pausing after different scenes to take in the moments. After each reading, we will pray together, sing together, and come to God in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Because when words fail us, as they often do in the face of grief, we always have this ancient prayer. And after each scripture reading, we will extinguish one candle. This is part of what is called a tenebrae service. Tenebrae meaning shadows. Tonight, as we hear once again the story of Christ's suffering and death, the shadows of grief slowly build around us with each extinguished candle. But at the end, when it might feel like death has won, a candle is relit. This candle serves for us a reminder of hope, a reminder that Christ is our light and our salvation, a reminder that for as heavy as the grief might be in this moment, life will come again. Christ will rise from the dead, and we will sing for joy at the resurrection. Tonight we gather in solemn devotion, but we also gather with the promise that the tree around which we assemble is a tree of life. We read from John because John is the passion, because the passion according to John proclaims Jesus as a triumphant king who reigns from the cross. In ancient days, this day was called the triumph of the cross because it reminds us that the church gathers today not just in solemn grief, but also in celebration of Christ's life-giving passion. We pray and we sing and we sit in silence this night to find strength and hope in that tree of life. And at the end of our time together this evening, you are invited to remain in this space for as long as you like. There is no benediction or sending tonight, because this worship, which we began last night, continues tomorrow as we hear God's story and the story of God's people over the ages, as we sit in vigil for the resurrection we know is coming. Tomorrow we conclude our three-part worship service as we finally get to rejoice in the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, we open our time together praying for the world, not as we ought, but as we are able. Let us pray for the holy for the holy church throughout the world almighty and eternal god you have shown your glory to all in jesus christ by your holy spirit guide the church and gather it through the world help it to preserve in faith proclaim your name and bring the good news of salvation in christ to all people we ask this through jesus christ our lord amen 
Let us pray for all servants of the church and all the people of God. Almighty and eternal God, your spirit guides the church and makes it holy. Strengthen and uphold our ministers and lay leaders. Keep them in health and safety for the good of the church. And help each of us in our vocations to the faithful, to do faithfully to do the work to which you have called us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for those preparing for baptism. Almighty and eternal God, you continue to bless the church. Increase the faith and understanding of those preparing for baptism. Give them new birth as your children and keep them in faith. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. For those who share our faith in Jesus Christ, Almighty and eternal God, you give your church unity. Look with favor on all who follow Jesus, your Son. Make all the baptized one in the fullness of faith, and keep us united in the fellowship of love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for the Jewish people, the first to hear the word of God. Almighty and eternal God, Long ago, you gave your promise to Abraham and your teaching to Moses. Hear our prayers that the people you called and elected as your own may receive the fulfillment of the covenant's promise. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those who do not share our faith in Jesus Christ. Almighty and eternal God, gather into your embrace all those who call out to you under different names, bring an end to interreligious strife, and make us more faithful witnesses of the love made known to us in your Son. We ask through, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those who do not believe in God. Almighty and eternal God, you created humanity so that all may long to know you and find peace in you. Grant that all may recognize the signs of your love and grace in the world and in, our, in the lives of Christians and gladly know you as the one true God. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for God's creation. Almighty and eternal God, you are the creator of a magnificent universe. Hold all the worlds in the arms of your care and bring all things to fulfillment in you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those who serve in public office. Almighty and eternal God, you are the champion of the poor and oppressed. In your goodness, give wisdom to those in authority so all may know justice, peace, freedom, and a share in the goodness of your creation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those in need. Almighty and eternal God, we give strength to the weary and new courage to those who have lost heart. Heal the sick, comfort the dying, give safety to travelers. Free those unjustly deprived of liberty and deliver your world from falsehood Hungry, hunger and disease. Hear the prayers of all who call on you in any trouble, that they may have the joy of receiving your help in their need. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
first reading is from John 18, 1 through 11. After Jesus has spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to a place where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with police from the chief priests and Pharisees, and they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was about to happen to him, came forward and asked them, Whom are you looking for? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus replied, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they stepped back and fell to the ground. Again he asked them, Who are you looking for? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, put your sword back into its sheath. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Dearest Jesus, so often we betray you in the choices that we make, yet you do not wish to lose even one of us. Thank you for your sacrifice. Amen. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The second reading. So the soldiers, their officer, and the Jewish police arrested Jesus and bound him. First, they took him to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jews that it was better to have one person die for the people. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Dearest Jesus, you went willingly to die for us all even though we deserve to perish. Thank you for your sacrifice. Amen. Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The 
The third reading is a reading from John. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter was standing outside at the gate. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out, spoke to the woman who guarded the gate, and brought Peter in. The woman said to Peter, You are not also one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the police had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing around and warming themselves. Peter also was standing with them and warming himself. Hear the word of the Lord. Dearest Jesus, we forget who we are, yet you remember us with great love. Thank you for your sacrifice. Amen. Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The fourth reading. Then the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his teaching. Jesus answered, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple where all the Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who heard what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the police standing nearby struck Jesus on the face, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Dearest Jesus, so often we put aside your teachings and act out our anger, yet you respond to us in kindness. Thank you for your sacrifice. Amen. Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. They asked him, You are not also one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. 
One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it, and at that moment the cock crowed. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Dearest Jesus, even when we cut off ourselves from you, you yearn to hold us tightly. Thank you for your sacrifice. Amen. Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The sixth reading. Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so as to avoid ritual defilement and to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered, If this man were not a criminal, we would not have brought, handed him over to you. Then Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jews replied, We are not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill what Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death he was to die. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate asked him, What is truth? After he had said this, he went out to the Jews again and told them, I find no case against him. But you have a custom that I release someone for you at the Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? They shouted in reply, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a bandit. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and striking him on the face. Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Here is the man. When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, 
Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. The Jews answered, We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die because he has claimed to be the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have the power to release you and the power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at a place called the Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. He said to the Jews, Here is your king. They cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but the emperor. So he handed him over to them to be crucified. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Dearest Jesus, we cried out with the crowd, Crucify him. Yet you did not condemn us. Thank you for your sacrifice. Remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The seventh reading. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. They were cruci- there they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews. But this man said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What have I written? What have I written? When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says. They divided my clothes among themselves, 
and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it in his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Hear the word of the Lord. Dearest Jesus, you were hung among criminals, yet you were innocent. Thank you for your sacrifice. Amen. Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The eighth reading. Since it was the day of preparation, the Jews did not want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath, especially because that Sabbath was a day of great solemnity. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified men broken and the bodies removed. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they had come to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear and at once blood and water came out. He who saw this has testified so that you also may believe his testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth. These things occurred so that the scripture might be fulfilled. None of his bones shall be broken. And again, another passage of scripture says, they will look on the one whom they have pierced. Hear the word of the Lord. God. Dearest Jesus, you suffered so that the scriptures might be fulfilled. Thank you for your sacrifice. Amen. Three. 
Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. After these things, Joseph, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the Jews, asked Pilate to t let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and removed his body. Nicodemus, who had at first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices in linen cloths, according to the burial custom of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no other had ever been laid. And so, because it was the, day, the Jewish day of preparation, and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Dearest Jesus, we laid you in a tomb, and now we mourn. Thank you for your sacrifice. Amen. Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
from the top trial and give you my body and the bride of heaven. But you have prepared a cross for your Savior. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Oh, my people, my church, what more could I have done for you and serve me? I like you on your way, a pillar of cloud and fire, but you led me to the judgment hall of Pilate. I guided you with the light of the Holy Spirit, but you have prepared a cross for your Savior. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Oh, my people, my church, what more could I have done for you? I planted you as my fairest one, but you have brought forth bitter fruit. I made you branches of the one I never left to your side, but you have prepared a cross for your Savior. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Oh, my people, my church, what more could I have done for you answer me? I pour saving water from the rock, for you give me vinegar to drink. I pour my life and give you the new covenant in my blood, for you have prepared a cross for your Savior. Holy God, Holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Oh, my people, my church, what more could I have done for you? Answer me. I gave you a royal scepter, but you gave me a crown of thrones. I give you the kingdom and crown you with eternal life, but you have prepared a cross for your Savior. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Oh, my people, my church, what more could I have done for I give you my peace, but you draw the sword in my name. And you have prepared a cross for your Savior. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Oh, my people, my church, what more could I have done for you? Answer me. I opened the waters to lead you to the promised land, but you opened my side away the spear. I washed your feet as a sign of my love, but you have brought, prepared a cross for your Savior. Holy God, holy and mighty, Holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Oh, my people, my church, what more could I have done for you? Answer me. I lift you up to the heights, but you lift me high on a cross. I raised you from death and prepared for you the tree of life. But you have prepared a cross for your Savior. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Oh, my people, my church, what more could I have done for 
your brothers and sisters. By what hungry you give me no food, thirsty and you give me no drink. A stranger, oh, you did not welcome me naked, oh, you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, 